I Wanna Jump Like Dee Dee, with me, Jar Sibold, is the music podcast that does music a bit differently. I'm talking to some incredible musicians, DJs and producers about how they use an experimental mindset to fuel their own creativity, pursue new challenges, overcome fears, bounce back from mistakes. For the last, for the last 25 years, my guest today has been producing um, like, the, like an outstanding stream of innovative expansive cinematic records almost that have really sort of pushed the the creative envelope for um for so long and really sort of kept fans on their toes as to what to expect next he plays guitar sings and and really like hits the drums with ferocious pre- precision his band is called and you will know us by the trail of dead are in equal parts to me abrasive thrilling soaring vulnerable brooding and I, I, but have this this really incredible sophisticated eye for for melody and they've recently brought the well, last year brought out their their latest album which for me is really this this kind of magnus opus it's in each song is its own magnus opus and they really sort of take you on your own kind of personal journey so i'm really delighted with that that i can finally shut up and i've got jason reese with me to talk about yeah i said hey Hey Jason, how are you? Good, all good, thanks, all good. So, so we, we were introduced through um, through Taz Taz Muerte from from Black Exploitation. Yes, definitely. Um, who I last saw when he was over he was over in the UK, um, I think in two thousand and nineteen mm-hmm. when when Pleasure Venom came over to do a sort of quick tour of the UK, um, and Taz was like, okay, you got to speak to you got to speak to Jason. Um, this this will be this will be great. He's he's really kind of been inspired by you. Um, how, like just to kind of kick things off, I mean, I mean, you've obviously been an inspiration to a, to a lot of people over over the years. I mean, is that is that like a big kind of motivator for you to, you know, for your music and creativity? Um, yeah, I mean, I think like for me to keep going, it's nice to have other you know, people in this creative atmosphere of Austin mm-hmm. or to, to share ideas and, and be inspired by each other. Um, I met Taz like years and years ago. Mm-hmm. I used to own a, a venue sort of bar and he was like doing, he was starting, he was like doing more hip hop stuff and, um, yeah. you know, and he was a, definitely a regular and we became more and more like acquainted and and mm-hmm. sort of i don't know i started going to watch his his uh band beta player mm-hmm. and, and i was really you know like we were i don't know i would just give him shit like he was playing drums at the t- time or playing you know and i was just like dude you gotta hit them harder man you know <laughs> and, um you know it just not really like being serious but like i was just messing with them but uh, you know you have a few drinks in you and anyways like the the thing is is that that kind of ribbing and sort of we've always like uh just take it taking a liking for each other and and so when black exploitation started up i was just like this is definitely more like closer to this is probably one of the better things he's you know yeah done, you know yeah. and so it was like i don't know it was just very important to champion that in any way that i could so, um, and especially with the app, you know, with the uh, environment that we're in, you know, in mm. you know, America with its, its, uh, you know, we're, we went, we went through four years of Trump and yeah, you know, just, it just, the music seemed like it was just amazing protest music, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I mean, for me, like, you know, you know, Austin has got what seems like to me, from an from an outside point of view, he's got this this like really kind of vibrant, you know, underground scene going on. You know, that, that's extremely creative and 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 also supportive as well. Yes, there. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of music, a lot of bands. Um, there's a sense of of, I mean, you might not always hang out and um, mm. and it uh, and you might not even always like what they're you know people are doing but there's yeah. but no one's like in this competition no one's trying yeah. to, to slag each other you know yeah um to be you know critical and you know it seems like 
it's not like a love fest, but it mm. definitely seems like that people are more open and 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 nicer here. You know, do, do they feel you, you know that the after the or during those sort of four years of of Trump that the it kind of there was this almost like sort of unity that that was sort of bringing bringing people together. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely would. Yeah, of course that, and you and you could feel that. Um, you know, there. That, I don't know. It seems crazy, but like obviously, some of the best music is made when there is like a, a really shitty government in power. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's something immediate there to hang on to and start talking about yeah i mean you know whether it's run the jewels or mm. you know i mean i i don't know just even like the you know or whatever like i guess in austin it's good there there's not a there's not a lot of political influenced bands i mean unless you're mm. going down more the hardcore punk yeah. route but you know that everybody is definitely kind of on the same page you know yeah, for the most yeah. part you know so you you, you so you brought, last year beginning of last year you brought out um your latest album um yeah. the godless void and other stories right how now you know kind of what are we now 18 months right months later, how, how how do you feel sort of looking looking back at, i mean i guess you had a short window in which to to tour yeah, we did about um, two months of yeah. touring on it, or a month and a, yeah, about two months. Um, it feels it feels great that we had a chance. To, we had a new band that we were working with. Yeah, so the the primary members is you know the this band is is me, Jason, and then Conrad uh, Keeley. So yeah, yeah, we've been at a, in kind of this partnership together for like a long really long time so mm -hmm. not everybody sticks around um yeah. so yeah. we we built this new band for that record and mm -hmm. the new band was like very it just felt like really good like a good group of people everybody's creative and and on on point and, and talented and it it was nice to like we got we we're very fortunate and so when all the when everything starts caving in and the pandemic is you know you know stopping everything um you know stopping all the touring and all the yeah uh yeah it 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 feels it feels odd because we didn't i don't feel like the album got its full you know never made its full potential as far as reaching certain people because you know i we've been a band for a long time yeah and i get it you know like uh sometimes you have to kind of remind people that you still exist <laughs> you know yeah, that's true yeah. yeah yeah um and so we we felt like this album was a good yeah you know like a good way to establish that yeah yeah i, th I mean i i i think it's an incredible album i really do i i i, I really i really love it i mean it's it's kind of it's, it's got it's got so many things going on as i think you know many of of, of you of your records do it, it, it's kind of yeah. You know, it's it it's got this kind of fire going on. It's it's, but it's at the same time, it's. I guess you know, there's there's an introspection to it as well. Um, but but yeah. ultimately, I came away sort of feeling really sort of positive listening to it, and there's feels like there's a sort of confidence, you know, with the band and and a, and, a, and this this optimism. That's that's how I kind of felt from it. That's that's great. Um, you know, because. The album was kind of made at a at a weird bleak time. Mm. We lot like two of our bandmates kind of moved on and they were doing other things. And it was kind of up to me, me uh, and Conrad and the producer Charles yeah. Godfrey to kind of like make this record work. And you know, it was it was a little daunting. Mm. You're trying to make something this this in your in your mind that's a it's a bigger sort of project. It's not like you know two guitar or like you know bass guitar and drums it was it we really were trying to be ambitious with the with it you know yeah yeah so um yeah i'm glad that that we managed to get over that and then make this record and have it come out um the funny thing is right now is we are currently working on a record at taz's house mm. 
and we've he they have like a, a studio yeah uh, there i don't know if he told you about it he did yeah 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 and we spent like a month there and it's sounding pretty amazing and we're very happy with it right now or you know happy with the, the process yeah you know, obviously yeah. there's a lot of work to be done but um you know we we that place was such a like up uplifting sort of inspirational uh getaway during this this troublesome time yeah and, um, so for us to get over there and then with this new lineup of you know which they're not new anymore because we've been with them for like two years now yeah. you know it just yeah. sort of feels new because you haven't had the yeah and all this this shit going on right so yeah i mean i feel like we're we're there's this positive wave of energy that we're trying to to you know definitely ride um as cheesy as that sounds but that's yeah. kind of like you know we're in a more we're in a better state of mind than we were on the last time around and and you know how people like say that that uh you you need to be like in a you know like some records are better made when everything's fucked up but i yeah. I, I feel like that's not always the case you know so, yeah yeah I mean, it's interesting what you say about it, you know, sort of going down to, to Taz's, you know, yeah. and recording in the, in the studio there. And it's almost like yeah. the, the, there you've got the, you've got the, the, the right people around you and you've also yeah. got the environment as well. The environment is almost like a, I don't know whether you want to call it like a sort of safe and safe space environment where mm -hmm. kind of like-minded people can kind of get together. And, and I wonder sometimes if that if that's kind of overlooked about the power of the the actual environment that you're in to allow this this kind of creativity because you know with your music mm -hmm. there's there's so many you know I guess things going on and different things that you're that you're trying it's extremely kind of creative and experimental in a way yeah. um, but you know I I I, I think that i mean how did you find that with the, with that environment and obviously and, and then the people as well i think it was definitely uh this this very liberating and very um again like it it's a place where you you find refuge and yeah. Yeah. you know some like that i haven't experienced as much um mm. we've gone and recorded in a lot of different places you know and there's that feeling wasn't there mm. um and so that's why their studio taz and um his partner lars their studio is yeah. is is like uh just again it's like this this oasis in the and you mm. know this like part of south austin where yeah you, you wouldn't even know that it existed there which yeah. is dirty, you know and if you know south austin it's <laughs> not not you know just um it's you know I, I, don't, like, I don't know it at all I don't know well, it. let's just say it's just kind of like not the most pretty area you know yeah of, of Austin yeah just all run down and shit you know yeah yeah they've got this kind of like sort of great environment there yeah I mean I mean like I, I mentioned earlier you, you have this these these really kind of like incredibly diverse um you know kind of it, sounds and things going on in in not not only in the album but in each song that you that you write as well you know like you know there's there's kind of orchestral you know there's really sort of like classical there's sort of tempo change these really kind of beautiful mel melodies and then there's the the more kind of visceral stuff going on i mean yeah. going, going back to to I'm, I'm always interested in sort of formative influences, you know, from a kind of mindset point of view, you know, about how, how this all sort of comes about to, that, that you, you know, you come with these, these sort of ideas. Going back to what, you know, sort of when you were a kid, how did you get into, you know, kind of both sort of music and, you know, what were you, the influences that, that allowed you this, this kind of freedom? I think, um, you know, what, when I was like, maybe, 18 or 19 I lived in Olympia Washington for a minute mm. like well and that's where Conrad was going to high school yeah and for us like so Conrad was his diet or growing up he was listening to a lot of progressive rock yeah yes 
uh, Rush, you know, Marillion. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, name it. yeah. Um, and I was really into hardcore, DC hardcore, um, Minor Threat, right. also Black. You know, the the, yeah. the all the all the good all the good stuff, and then like also a lot of the post punk. Yeah, from, from the UK, and so yeah. we kind of started bonding on. Um, you know the Ramones and the replacements, and mm. and then around Olympia at the time, uh, you know Nirvana was like they were living pretty much in the in down the street. You know, like mm. for me, like um, and you had bands like the Melvins playing, and uh, Bikini Kill was just starting to to get together, and and um, you know, and then you had Seattle up there, and uh, there was Olympia was kind of more like the nerds, and Seattle were like kind of more like the jocks, you know. Because right, they, yeah. Chris Cornell was like this Adonis, you know, with his like, you know, his uh, six pack, you know, and <laughs> long hair. Whereas like in Olympia, it was like Calvin Johnson and a bunch of nerdy, you know, nerd punks, you know, in a lot of yeah. ways. Um, and so there with that. In Olympia, there was quite a musical diversity. Um, it wasn't all like loud, angry music. Mm. There was like really folky, you know, like just things like the pastels would. Yeah. Were on K Records, you know, um, mm. and from there was like, I don't know, bands like Beat Happening. Um, mm -hmm. So with that, you know, comes like the other stuff like Melvin's and Nirvana and, and, and it all kind of intersects and intertwines in a, in a crazy way. Mm. Um, so you're, you're a little more open to, well, we could try this and try that. And I think when the band started, I was getting into like a lot of shoegaze music. Um, yeah. Um, Ride and My mm. Bloody Valentine and you know we were just kind of getting into our bands like spiritualized or whatever yeah we we're, were starting to get into the idea that you don't necessarily have to just be stuck in this one sort of sound you can you can do whatever you want you know yeah so i remember like when i when i was uh, what during, during the sort of early mid mid 80s that kind of like i guess that sort of age i mean i grew up on the remotes they were my kind of first first sort of yeah and then kind of got into, you know, probably sort of similar to you, the, you know, kind of bad brains, uh -huh. threats. Right. Chris could do, you know, those, those sort of, sort of bands. Yeah. I was like, I, I was, I was so kind of narrow minded. Yeah. Sort of tunnel vision of what, what I, what I liked. And it was only, it was really, I think when it, probably when Public Enemy's first album came out that I started to, you know kind of eyes open oh, actually i was listening to some local radio shows and there was like sort of adrian sherwood from uh mm -hmm. you know kind of like on on you sounds yeah you know some of that that sort of dub um sort of experimental dub that was going on that right, right. was really kind of you know exciting and sort of experimental and that kind of started mm -hmm. to open my my kind of mind to these other other kind of things that were that were going on yeah, the um, that too for me also as well yeah. is like Public Enemy. For, I forgot to mention that. I'm so sorry. No, did, you know, Fear of a Black Planet was like a huge influence on on Trail of Dead, which you can't hear it, but we like the idea of all these different sonic textures yeah. overlapping. Yeah. You know, yeah, like whatever with the Bomb Squad were doing, and so, and then yeah, I I don't know, like just listening to like early electronic like dub stuff that you're talking about is yeah yeah the real kind of out there dj spooky <laughs> yeah Re really kind of yeah different i remember a lot like um you know tackhead as well and, and just, oh yeah i haven't heard that name in a while you know yeah. they really kind of like out that mark stewart and the mafia you know all those yeah. the pop group and stuff you know re really kind of again sort of pushing the pushing the boundaries at that at that sort of time of course then there was the sort of crossover stuff as it as it was termed then there was right the, that, that kind of late 80s so how did the, like those different influences how did they sort of when you 
first started playing, how did those kind of fit in? Um, I mean, you know, I wasn't a really good player that as it, as, you know, it was very just remedial, you know, like my, my musical education was pretty limited. So it was all through trial and error and just trying new things. And so you, you were self-taught. Yeah. Self-taught. So, so whatever that I took on, I, you know, whether it's like, oh, let's learn how a sampler works and, you know, yeah. or, or whatever, a drum machine and mm. or, or how to play the drums or how to play guitar, you know, just all of that was very, you know, it starts out really kind of basic and because, you know, you, you're going off that, that whole thing of, well, you know, you can do this because, you know, it's like that punk rock uh, philosophy, you know, yeah. just pick up an, a, an instrument and just play it and you'll just play it. Yeah. That's that's an interesting one, I, and that that sort of philosophy. I, I, one one of the one of the earlier episodes, I was talking to um, Andrew Fern from Sleaford Mods. Yeah, and and he was saying that um, like his kind of thing, you know, he's, he he just sort of creates these sort of beats in his you know in his room, you know, at, at, at home. Uh, but one of his one of his real like motivators was uh, or influences was that exactly that punk ethos of yeah. Well, you know, I think he said, well, you know, I can do that. Mm -hmm. it kind of gave him the belief to, to go and try things and just like, fuck it, I'm just going to try and see what happens. Right. And I think that's kind of like how we approach the albums, too. When we make them, we were just like, well, let's see if this will work. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and if what harm could it do? It's, I mean, you know, it's not like, I don't know, we we don't really have a lot of shame in the choices that we make. <laughs> we're just like, we're just like, let's see what, we'll, we'll go for it. Um, if it, if, if it seems like it's ridiculous, maybe that's even better, you know? I mean, that, that, that's a, that's a great mindset. Yeah. To have. I think that's, that's a real like positive to have is basically that you're going to try things and, and it's like, it, it to me, it kind of shows that you, that, that you're evolving. You want to evolve. Right try different things. I mean, it kind of keeps you, I mean, there's, I always think there's, there's some bands that are, that were never meant to change and the Ramones were kind of one of them, you know, it's of like, course, yes. but, 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 you know, outside of that, then, you know, kind of evolution is, it's kind of like the lifeblood, isn't it? Yeah. It, so I have this hardcore band called Band of Bastards and mm -hmm. that is, we are so like, you know, let's play by the, the rules, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, you don't break the rules of hardcore. <laughs> Play by the hardcore rules. You have to write in the in that that genre, that that yeah. way of thinking. That's how. Otherwise, it's not going to be right, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. Funny to think that way. I mean, we're not like overthinking it, you know. We really have a true love for for my, you know, like bands like Minor Threat and you know, or whatever New York hardcore. But it's fun to do. It's like an it it is kind of an exercise in, in one way because yeah. it's the opposite of Trail of Dead, where we're like, let's do something that would expand rock yeah. the rock music genre, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean it's interesting, isn't it? Like like you know, we've mentioned minor threat a few times and then yeah. you know what Ian McKay's sort of thought process was when when Fugazi mm -hmm. came along, you know, right. sort of switching them because they you know, to my mind, they, they weren't weren't a hardcore band. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, but yeah. you know, you can't. You almost kind of, kind of left that. That's minor threat. I'm going to leave that behind, and now I'm mm -hmm. kind of moving on. This is this is new. Yep. I mean, and and I think that's like how trail is in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just what whatever we did in in the '90s, which we're, we're trying to to kind of whatever get away from that and but also do something that's you know not going to lose our our personality or our yeah. you know it's it's a it's a it's a crazy balance you know in, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. i don't know how it, but it seems natural for us yeah so, so when i i do something like a, a hardcore band it's just kind of like also another it's kind of freeing in a lot of ways yeah. even though in this like 
box kind of <laughs> so you know what i mean yeah like i guess you could make hardcore more innovative but i'd rather make like a really good hardcore album you know yeah i remember i i, I was um I was sort of talking to john dwyer the yeah you know and he was saying that you know that he he'll go through a phase of listening to like about three weeks of sort of solid hardcore music and that's like all he listens to i said surely that you know that's gonna have an influence on what your next record's gonna be he said oh for sure yeah you know i'll come along and i'll just like bang it through and it's you'll you'll hear a more kind of hardcore kind of record i guess you're you're sort of this is your your kind of equivalent but you're doing it in a different in a different band you still got that kind that's of that's funny like to listen to the hardcore music for three weeks would be <laughs> I don't know if I get to I mean, he, says he has to choose his moments when he listens to it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but uh, I mean, there are some people that just that's all they listen to is metal and hardcore. You know? it's just, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Good. Good for you. But my life is just too. I can't. I can't. It's just, I have to have like. Di you know diversity so many di diversity when, when you like with sort of trailer when you when you when you have um you know that you you're trying these different things mm -hmm. and what what kind of goes through your mind you know with you and sort of conrad when when things don't work out or the the okay you try something you, oh. you, you kind of think right i really want this but it just doesn't work how do you feel if you if you have to ditch it or whatever i mean you know you're you you have those well there's a lot of like records that we'll listen back because we we have like 10 records which is crazy um mm. think, but like we'll listen back to some of the some of the records and we're like oh my god you know what why was this so long you know why did we take forever to get to this point and yeah and and that's kind of like a little it's like a good learning lesson and we're lucky enough to like know to have that there to kind of build off of that and mm. and not make not not that you're making a mistake but just not not do the same thing over and over again and, and go through you know try to change the pattern a bit yeah um, uh i feel like what we're working on right now is is very it's it's kind of like this it's very i think it's like i don't uh man i, I just feel like <laughs> it, it's beyond anything we've done before wow okay so i think we're kind of and which is great but it's going to be exciting. like but it's going to be one of those things where it's going to be really hard to play live <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna have to, you know we're gonna have to buckle down and like you know definitely take it as serious as possible you know just really rehearsed the, the shit out of it <laughs> wow that sounds that sounds pretty pretty interesting then. it's very complex i think that's, yeah. that's what i'm getting at you know like more yeah. complex than anything we've done in in, in, a, in a long time so wow so. you 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 mentioned earlier about you know kind of personnel changes and you know kind of you know the, those kind of things happen i mean to me that the the, the way that you've um you know you 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 show a lot of adaptability in how you, you know, kind of react to that. And, um, you know, you, you have, your, you know, the core of you and you and Conrad and, you know, when stuff goes off and, you know, the, you know, band members leave and you work out who to kind of bring, bring in, I mean, that, you know, that's not, that's not an easy, easy kind of thing to do, you know, to get yeah. the wrong people and, and to, you know, cause there's a, there's a, you know, you know, better than me, you know, there's personality issues, you know, of course sort of fit the band and stuff like that but that that to me sort of shows you know a lot of adaptability in how you know how you react to these sort of situations which, which just just happen you know yeah i mean that seems to be the way our mode is, is to adapt mm. we've really been that kind of band that it adapts to whether it's the chain and change in the music world as far as like the way people find music and you know i mean we've gone from where you you, people would buy vinyl and CDs to yeah you know, yeah you know, now we're like at this point where it's just all streaming and and oh and, or, or or people are buying cassettes now buy, oh, buy, yeah. Buy cassettes. oh yeah well maybe we'll go back to that um, <laughs> uh, so yeah just to 
we've learned that. I mean, that seems to be the biggest lesson is to adapt to all the, all the, all the things that come at you, you know, adapt to them. And, um, and when it's like changing band personnel, it, we've been through it so many different times that we know, we kind of know who we're looking for, you know, yeah. um, yeah. and I feel like we're not trying to make like clones of ourselves. We're just trying to find someone that's going to feel the same sort of, uh, philosophy of what, what trail of dead is, you know, because yeah. there is, there is that after 10 records, you know, you, yeah. Yeah. you know, has, has, has this, you know, both, you know, kind of changes in sort of personnel, but also how, you, how you've handled those sort of, you know, either that sort of situation or, or other things that have been thrown at the band over the years. Have you, have you learned a lot about yourself over that, over that, that time? Yeah. I mean, I, I would say that, you know, we used to, to just trash like clubs and, you know, yeah. it really, you know, fucked up and, mm. That was kind of like a fun part of it you know and that's youth and that's like the the that youth was is exuberant and, and bombastic yeah. and you know now that we're a bit older um we've learned that you know you can tap into that but you mm. don't always have to be in that you know you know mindset you know yeah like, you know it's uh it's kind of like one of those things that you you can turn the switch on and 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 it's there yeah um, uh, and that you know that with the, the the fact that we're not just like one a one side you know one box kind of band mm -hmm. you know you there's so many different little facets to us you know yeah um, yeah and that's we're lucky to have that and that's yeah. you know we can fall back on that how much of it, like you know, kind of what what you do is, you you know, either you, yourself in your own mind or when you're kind of working with Conrad is sort of instinctive, you know, that just it's like okay, this feels right. I'm just I'm just gonna go with it because I guess some people, I mean, you know, I I tend to like sometimes I I, I sometimes I wish I, that I've trusted my instinct when I've yeah made certain decisions or haven't made certain decisions because somebody else has said something and i've been thinking okay i'm not they, they know better than me they know you know right. this, this lack of self-confidence and lack of self-belief and then you you look back and you think fuck i wish i'd mm -hmm. I, I my gut was right it was right why didn't yeah. i why didn't i kind of do that yeah definitely we've been very instinctual as far as our approach as far as like the way we've done a lot of things in our lives you know yeah um and that has steered us into to some of the some great moments and we've been yeah. very fortunate to have that um we're not a very calculated band where there's i mean i can't think of us sitting around a like you know in a boardroom thinking about <laughs> you know what i mean just planning yeah. out how this how to present ourselves here we are and we're going to make this <laughs> on slide one yeah, slide one, we're going to make this type of album, you know, I mean, but the way like pop music is made, it's, it is like that, right? I mean, mm. for the most part, like, mm. it's just a, like the, the K-pop, which, you know, it's like a, it's just a model, a business model that people, yeah. you know, participate in and, and, w you know, we're not a part of that world, which, we, you know, which is great, but um, it's definitely not the most popular form, you know, form of music out there. You know what I mean? So, you know. Have you have you have you found that there's been you know as as you, as you sort of got older that you know there's there's sort of more you know kind of uncertainty you know kind of like in the world and how you how your your sort of view of the world. Um, I wouldn't say. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to be as optimistic as possible. Mm. Uh, you know, the, there's definitely that, but that's always kind of been there since I was a kid. Anyway, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I I feel like I've I've always had that that 
there's that cynical worldview that that's in the back of your head because you know you've listened to like songs you know like punk songs speaking about you know a new a nuclear war happening you know yeah. like Reagan, reagan's gonna drop a bomb you know or you know whatever russia is gonna drop a bomb on america yeah. you know, yeah. vice versa. so that's always kind of been there because i'm a you know i'm i'm a child of the the 70s and 80s so yeah you know, that, so that affects and you know um I, th I think though, you know, you're right. I mean, I'm I'm the same kind of era as you, and I think that, you know those those kind of influences, yeah, um, yeah. Or, or kind of experiences of, you know, of your teens and things like that, kind of living yeah. with that, you know, that that sort of Cold War in the UK. There was there was there was other yeah. kind of wars going on and political, you know, there were kind of riots in the UK. Blah, and you you live with that, and you you. You, I think you are kind of formed by those, you know, those, those sort of form a part of what you do and how you react to things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess we, you try to do is not let that just dominate your, your, uh, your life at, at, you know, I mean, I'm sure like right now we're all trying to find a way, yeah. a light through this, this insanity that we're going through in this yeah. pandemic. Yeah. So um you know like like hr said man you got to keep that pma you know absolutely positive, absolutely right mental attitude yeah <laughs> now, but, you, um, now, you, i mean you, you you play um i know you've, you've never made a big deal of this of the, of the different instruments you know sort of switching switching kind of instruments i'm sure you've talked about this this a lot but it, it kind of to, to me as a as a sort of fan of the band, you know, it, it kind of live shows visually, it's really kind of interesting, you know, and it's like, okay, well, there's a sort of switch around going on here, you know, and I think, I think, you know, it helps. And this is, this is again, from a sort of fan's perspective, it helps that, that, that kind of creativity, there's something different, always something different going on. It's, it keeps it very fresh and, and, you know, right there out in, in, you know, in the line of sight. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that was all accidental. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when we started, basically it was Conrad and I as a two piece band and, yeah, you know, and just, we would like back each other up, you know, mm -hmm. um, I would hop on the drums when he would sing a song and he would do the same. And so that just became kind of a natural, uh, way of doing the band and it didn't seem seem bizarre to us that everybody can just jump on in different instruments and and it was uh, again it's that that freedom that you know well we could bring a choir in and you know a, strings and or or just play a feedback track for you know 20 minutes or so you know what I mean yeah, like yeah. you know that freedom of just going all over the, the map and not worrying about the the typical roles that you're supposed to be in, or playing in in a band or in music you know yeah that's that's a really good really good point actually you made, you made me think actually have, have you have you ever played live with a you know with a with a with a choir or a kind of part orchestra we've we've done like a little bit we've played with some strings before okay. um and that was something that we've talked about and you know um it was done quite tastefully i feel like i don't feel like it was like yeah. anything like like a cheesy like metallica's you know version yeah. of, of their you know with a <laughs> big orchestra but um man i am so sorry i gotta go catch a plane oh just, have you oh wow yeah. okay no 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 cool. no problem at all don't, um, don't 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 let me hold you up i wondered what you were looking at I thought you said, okay. yeah i was like i was, I was, I was like i was like um oh yeah i gotta catch this plane um no that's cool this, totally fine but this uh thank you for having me on uh, oh at all it's been an absolute absolute pleasure listening to you jason thanks for, yeah. for, your, for your time and um yeah best of luck with everything i hope everything okay. Kind of works out. Look forward to seeing you in the UK yeah. when you come over. Love to hang out in the UK. All Definitely. Right, take care. Take care. Right. Safe flight. Yeah, All the best. Bye. Take care. Thanks for listening to the show, and I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you'll tune in for the next episode. 
In the meantime, it would be really awesome if you could rate and review the show and also share it with any friends who you think might enjoy it.